Madam Speaker, I'd like to start by recognizing the personal and economic sacrifices Canadians have made during this pandemic. They stayed home, they followed public health orders, and they did everything in their power to flatten the curve and beat COVID-19. Families across this country are grieving the 21,000 people who have died. Now, a year into this pandemic, Canadians are exhausted and frustrated. The repeated lockdowns and restrictions have taken a heavy toll. Small and medium-sized businesses are struggling to survive. Millions of people are experiencing financial hardship. Mental health challenges, drug overdoses, and domestic violence have all increased. Despite the sacrifices, COVID-19 is still spreading in our communities, and new variants are a growing concern. Canadians are looking at what is happening in other countries, and it's not lost on them that our strategy in Canada isn't working. Inadequate coordination between federal, provincial, and territorial responses has failed to stop the spread of the virus. In countries such as New Zealand, Australia, Taiwan, and South Korea, the spread of COVID-19 has been arrested. Case levels are down, the death toll is much lower, the economies are up and running, and people are going about their lives. What can Canada learn? Where did we go wrong? And how can we move forward in a way that will result in less hardship for Canadians? Countries that have eliminated the spread of the disease share these key aspects. They had a national strategy. They closed borders. They required quarantines for citizens returning from international locations. They limited internal travel within the country. They mandated masks for indoor public spaces. They tested and used contact tracing. They continued to use circuit breaker lockdowns to quickly stop new outbreaks. And the health minister is in charge of vaccine procurement, not the industry minister. The key to success was to isolate outbreaks and use multiple tools to limit the spread of the virus. These are actions that the Green Party MPs advocated for in the early days of the pandemic. Instead of a well-coordinated national strategy, Canadians have had a patchwork of provincial health orders that were often contradictory and confusing. In some cases, COVID-19-related decisions appeared to be driven by politics instead of science. I appreciate the fact that the government organized an intergovernmental coordinating committee with medical health officers from across the country. But we needed more than a committee. We needed more than a patchwork of confusing protocols and mandates that change from province to province. Canada is a federation, and it is true that provinces have jurisdiction over health care. I understand that the federal government is reluctant to use its emergency powers to create and enforce a national strategy. Some provincial governments have at times politicized this pandemic. Such actions have been detrimental for Canadians. Australia is also a federation with jurisdictional and political differences between the national and state governments. But they work together successfully in a coordinated effort to stop the spread of COVID-19. And the population there is much better off for that cooperation. The vaccines are finally rolling out across the country, but the spread of new variants is not, it's not certain how effective the vaccines will prove to be. We need to be prepared to stop the spread of variants that may be vaccine resistant. We're not out of the woods yet, and a lack of national coordination can still have dire consequences. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It's disappointing that the Honourable Member is glossing over constitutional requirements and constitutional authority. And summoning up the Emergency Act doesn't help anyone in this situation because it requires provincial consent. Uh, I'm sure the Honourable Member has read the legislation, and I don't know why he would want a constitutional crisis in the middle of a pandemic. But that being said, Madam Speaker, the federal government is committed to protecting the health and safety of Can Canadians, and this remains our top priority. I'd like to assure Canadians that the Government of Canada has developed and is implementing its plan to respond to the pandemic on all fronts. And we were working to ensure that all Canadians are vaccinated um, or that we have enough vaccines um, to vaccinate all Canadians by the end of September. The government has been hard at work negotiating with manufacturers and suppliers to secure significant vaccine supply for Canadians and planning for a vaccine rollout. 
in development of this plan. The federal government has engaged and consulted at all levels of government, Indigenous leaders, international partners, industry, medical and scientific experts. On December 8th, the government published Canada's COVID-19 immunization plan, saving lives and livelihoods. At the heart of the plan are six core principles, science-driven decision-making, transparency, coherence and adaptability, fairness and equity, public involvement and consistent reporting. These principles are governing and forming our vaccination rollout actions. The plan outlines seven steps in the rollout process and these are communicating and engaging with Canadians throughout the campaign, obtaining sufficient supply of vaccines, obtaining regulatory authorization from Health Canada, allocating and distributing vaccines efficiently and securely, administering vaccines according to a sequence of priority populations and identified by experts and collecting data to monitor vaccine safety, effectiveness and coverage. We're making progress and we're laying the groundwork for great gains and momentum in the coming months. As um, the Honourable Member is no doubt aware from the news, we have procured through advanced purchase agreements more than enough vaccines to vaccinate all eligible Canadians. And without compri compromising relator regulatory integrity, we have expedited the regulatory review of promising vaccine candidates. Vaccines have been approved by Health Canada and are currently being administered to priority populations that, have, uh, that were recommended by the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, an independent committee comprised of health experts. During the first phase of the rollout campaign, our strategy is to vaccinate those deemed most vulnerable to an uh, infection, severe illness and death. We are deeply grateful to the members of the Canadian Armed Forces working, excuse me, working within the operation of the vaccine uh, rollout task force. As logistics experts, they are playing a vital role in the success of our campaign. In addition to the Canadian Armed Forces, we have engaged with private sector to support the logistics of this ambitious undertaking and to insist with the administration of vaccines in the provinces and territories, we are enlisting the help of the Red Cross and other healthcare professionals. This is truly an unprecedented situation that has called for all hands on deck. In closing, Madam Speaker, we must continue to implement the public health measures that have helped us to tamp down the number of cases and hospitalizations over the past difficult year, and we can remain optimistic that our efforts will start to pay, pay off if we remain steadfast. Thank you. The, the, honourable, uh, the honourable Member for Nanaimo Ladysmith. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank the Parliamentary Secretary for his response. The national strategy in Australia didn't create a constitutional crisis there, and I don't think it would cause a constitutional crisis here. It would have done us a lot of good. When the pandemic was declared a year ago, the Green Party caucus made a series of recommendations to the government. We added to those recommendations as time went on as, and as we saw what other countries were doing successfully to combat the spread of COVID-19. Successful countries have all had unified national strategies. There's been a lack of political courage to do what is necessary at the federal level in Canada. Both sides of the House, there is little appetite to do anything that might upset a provincial premier. I'll give you that. But a lack of a unified national COVID-19 strategy continues to have poor outcomes and hurts Canadians in a myriad of ways. We need stronger national coordination, and the sooner we start to do that, the better the results we will achieve. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And the Honourable Member is comparing apples to oranges. The Constitution of Australia and the Constitution of Canada are completely different. We are working within our constitutional framework and it's disappointing to see the Green Party suggest that there are um, magic solutions to constitutional problems that are real. And this government has worked steadfastly with provincial premiers and the provincial government and the vaccines are rolling out at an enormous rate and all Canadians should have access to vaccines by the end of September. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker.